nay là Hải Hòa sẽ đi tham quan trên dòng sông Chicago nha Đó lên lầu Đi lên lầu Tự như chiếc này đây nha Đi đâu cũng thấy cái trong uh, hotel à Nói nhất là uh, On the other side of the bridge To our right Building clad in white With that wonderful clock tower The Wrigley building Designed in 1921 by Graham Anderson, Probst and White, commissioned by William Wrigley, our chewing gum magnate. They clad the building, the architects clad the building in that white material, which is terracotta, baked earth, or clay. It's a wonderful material. The clock tower is actually a replica of the Geralda Tower in Sevilla, Spain. Right across the way on our left, the building that is clad in limestone done in the neoclassical Beaux-Arts style, looks like a Roman temple, uh, was designed in 1923. Alfred Alshuler designed it for the lead architect in charge. Uh, she designed, they designed this project with the three towers. The lowest is 47 stories, the middle tower, 74, the tallest, the one that has to deal with the most wind spread. To our left, we're passing the Sheridan Hotel. Sheridan, um, with Apple Store, right here along the riverbank. Apple Store completed in 2017, done by British architect Sir Norman Foster. It's a reminder to us uh, that people are out and good. Notice how they used uh, neo Gothic ornamentation, including flying buttresses that are about 93 or 94 stories tall. What gives it the second place position? is that on the very top of the building is a spire, a spire that is 250 feet, that's a lot, about 80 meters. Um, so that's where it gets the second place position. I love the setbacks that uh, line up with the roof lines of neighboring buildings and the blue reflective glass, it's lovely. So we're almost back to where we started. We've got Wrigley Building on our left and then across the street from Wrigley is Tribune Tower. Tribune Tower, home to the newspaper back in 1925. Um, it was the result of a competition that the owner, Colonel Robert, Here you can see his very first residential project. These two circular towers make up Marina City, completed in the 1960s. He started with glass. Reflective glass was designed by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill in the late 1980s. Quaker Tower, when it first opened, now it's headquarters for the American Bar Association. Skidmore designed this wonderful uh, three-tiered um, walk, river walk, between the two bridges. It really has improved the space. Remember River City. I talked about Bertrand Goldberg on the south, a little dark, but there's some lovely ornamental brick accents and of course that wonderful clock tower. Well, Marshall Fields also had a wholesale business and this building was built with four million square feet inside. It is huge, one of the largest buildings in the United States with four million square feet inside. 
And the plan in 1930 was for fields to be able to use that on the left, designed by BKL, the one on the right, designed by um, Pelly. And then in the center, we have a new commercial tower that just opened up this year. Amazing changes have taken place all of their money. So timing, a very important part of any business plan. To our right, we are going to be passing four buildings that are called the Gateway Buildings. All four of them built over the air rights of the railroads that run underneath them. All four of them were designed by architects from Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, many of whom had trained under Ludwig Mies van der Rohe at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Mies glass, they planted the ginkgo trees and ivy on the walls to make it a much greener site along the river. Beyond the Randolph Street Bridge, you're going to see a building on the left that just opened up last year, uh, designed by Getch Partners. What's interesting is that if this beautiful 55-story building um, is replacing a five-story building that was on this site. They tore down that five-story building because five stories is not a really good real estate investment, is not beginning or is not returning enough on uh, the investment. So yes, tear down the five-story building, put up this beautiful 55-story building in its place. Uh, it is LEED certified, it is sustainable. The primary tenant is Bank of America. They take up one third of the space. To our left, beyond the bridge, building that is clad in limestone, our Civic Opera building, designed, designed in 1930 by Graham Anderson, Folkston White, with some of the ornamentation in limestone that's celebrating the opera. The blank wall is protecting the stage and lobby area that are located right behind it. But I do want you to realize that there are a lot of offices in this building. In the We're heading um, towards the south branch of the river. We have to go under a bi-level bridge, which is right in front of us, the Lake Street Bridge. The lower level handles automobile traffic. The top level carries the elevated train. If you are visiting Chicago, one of the best ways to get around, least expensive, and can get you to just about any neighborhood that you want to go to, is using public transportation. Whether you are using um, buses or the subway or the elevated train, it's really, really great. Now, those of you who may be interested in seeing the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright, I always suggest at this point, head on the green line right here on uh, the Lake Street L, head out to Oak Park, get off at the last stop, Harlan Avenue, all you have to do is walk five blocks north uh, to the home studio. So, to toward the Mississippi River. Now, some of you, I'm sure, are curious to know about our neighbors. How did they feel when we started to send our contaminated waters down in their direction? They were not particularly pleased. The people of St. Louis especially, they were not pleased. They appealed to the federal government uh, to prevent the opening of the canal, but they were too late, they were unsuccessful. It was a fait accompli. Now how is our river doing today? It 
is doing pretty well. Beginning about 11 miles south and west of where we are right now. The idea was that that new canal would have a deeper bed. More background about the river, you'll be able to hear me wherever you are on board, so no problem. Now, I talked about the importance of the Chicago River for Chicago um, being here in the first better view of that reflection when we come back down from the north branch of the river. But right now, I want you to look at the building directly in front of us. The building is called River Point. It has that dramatic parabolic arch over um, the entryway and an inverted parabola at the top. River Point was completed in 2017, designed by Picard Chilton. It is considered a very sustainable building. I shouldn't say very sustainable. It is a sustainable building. It has received LEAD certification. That's an acronym for Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design. Um, greener. And notice what is connecting those two square towers. What does it look like to you? A bridge, pretty obvious, right? They were being postmodern contextual with the building site on the river. Now in 19... Ding, ding, ding.